there everybody in diamond painting and flash tube land on youtube this is tina frazier coming to you from columbus ohio today is tuesday december 24th at about 209 p.m eastern time in the united states and i kind of wanted to come on today to wish everybody out there happy holidays merry christmas happy hanukkah and whatever other holidays that you happen to celebrate um, I wish, I hope everybody's having a good um, holiday season. Um, it's been pretty good here. Um, we just got back from doing some last minute running around to get some stuff. Um, tonight our dinner is going to be strawberry cake and fried chicken, which um, happens to be a very popular trend in um, Japan. So we're having... Um, strawberry cake and fried chicken tonight for dinner looking forward to that um then around eight o'clock i have to head to church because at 10 p.m the handbell choir at church that i'm in is um playing for the christmas eve service at 10 p.m so we've got to get get there and set up and warm up and practice and everything like that but um so far it's been a pretty good holiday season i've done um quite a bit of stitching on a model that um, I was doing for Emily J. Van Designs, EJV Designs, um, local designer here in Columbus, Ohio, that's associated or affiliated with, um, uh, Emily works at my local needle workshop, Cross My Heart, here in Columbus, and, um, she has her own design company, and she reached out to, um, some of the people that she knows on Facebook, uh, about two and a half, three weeks ago, asking if somebody could stitch, um, stitch one of her newer designs for her um, because she was having some trouble and so I um, I volunteered to stitch it for her. I turned it in on Saturday. She was really happy. So um, you'll probably see um, some, at least some pictures of it um, later on when the pattern's released, at least of my stitching of it. Um, she's going to be in the process of finishing it, but she needed to have it done before Christmas so she could um, get some of the photographs um, made for printing the pattern for market coming up early in 2020. So anyway, um, I don't have a whole lot of um, other stitchy updates to show you. Um, most of the updates that I've had, you um, you already know. Um, I also don't have any diamond painting updates other than right here, um, you will see this, uh, this is a stylized reindeer. Um, it is a diamond dots kit that um, I got from, I want to say probably Hobby, either Hobby Lobby or Joann's or something a couple weeks ago. My mom and I picked up a couple of Christmas kits and she has since finished the two kits that she got. She got the angel and the, um, the lantern and I think she had another one. I'm not sure. I know she finished the lantern and I think she got the angel. Maybe those were the only two she got. I got the stylized reindeer. I did start it. I can show that to you. Um, didn't get a big start on it. Didn't get a huge start on it. I did start the corner though. So I did start. You can see here I got this corner done. I worked on this a little bit like um, two nights ago over the weekend. And um, this is a Diamond Dots kit. So I did start it, but I haven't gotten very far. Um, so yeah, this other canvas behind it, this one here, this is for my Heaven and Earth Designs um, chart that I'm going to do. It's the uh, uh, Faces of Fairy by Jas Jasmine Beckett Griffith. It's the, the one with the snowmen, uh, the snowflakes um, falling behind, around the um, face of the... Um, the subject so but yeah so this is diamond dots um, this is the reindeer it's kit number five one one four one um, it is a 12 by 12 design size fabric size is 15 by 15 this one comes with 13 colors including a B and um, gold like uh, rhinestone kind of real pretty shimmery colors they go up in the antlers and in the stylized um, swirls on the body and then the AB ones are some of the white in the um, body of the reindeer. So this is going to be really pretty once it's done. Looking forward to it. Um, I m hope to have it done by New Year, so we shall see. Um, but anyway, that's that's about the only real update that I have for you. Um, 
so coming in to um, coming into the new year, um, I have been doing some um, planning in my new passion planner for 2020. I get the um, the pro size, which is the mid size, and um, this is my 2020 planner. I've been um, kind of working the last couple of nights at setting up um, January's um, monthly. So you can see here. Here is how I am planning January, January's monthly. I have some of the um, stitch alongs and some of the typical um, uh, things for coming up. Um, so, uh, like I have Mill Hill Mondays written in here. Um, some of these, you know, I'm not planning on on getting into, but like this weekend here, um, I have this day off. Um, the one in blue. I also have this this Monday off. Um, but this weekend here, January 24th and 25th, my mom and I are going down to Marietta, Ohio to the Lafayette Hotel. And we're going to be participating in the Lights Out Lockdown that is hosted by um, Hidden Marietta. Um, it's that local paranormal group that's down in Marietta, Ohio. They're um, doing an overnight stay lockdown at the Lafayette Hotel to investigate and my mom and I are going to do that for both nights. The Friday night one is um, they have a special um, celebrity guest that's coming in to do the investigations with everybody so we're going to do it Friday night and then on Saturday night is their just their basic lockdown at the hotel so we're going to stay both Friday and Saturday night and uh, just kind of enjoy the weekend but that is um, that is my uh, January month and then um, since the planner starts actually technically next week this is next week's um, kind of layout in it I use washi tape and colored pens and stuff to write in there but um, it's gonna be it's gonna be kind of fun um, I have lots of lots of stuff going on um, I'm going to be participating hopefully in quite a few sal stitch alongs and challenges for um, cross stitch uh, in 2020. I know um, virtual stitchers, stitch mania, <laughs> uh, school of magical stitches, enchanted stitching challenges, um, virtual stitchers, um, full coverage fanatics, uh, and there's quite a few other groups that um, I keep tabs on that are doing um, doing some things and um, one of the things that's starting um, in one of the groups I forget what group it is that on uh, Chris or New Year's Eve rather they're starting um, Donna Gelson Gelsinger having an art design sale so I actually got this this is the mini reindeer by Donna Gelsinger she's this is the only pattern of hers that I have from having an art designs so I may uh, I may be starting this on New Year's Eve to go along with that sale. Um, I believe it runs all year long, but um, they're starting at New Year's Eve. So this is one of the things I'm probably going to be doing. Um, I'm going to wait until after Christmas to kind of see what I get tomorrow um, before I jump in and start kidding it up. Um, that way I can see. So speaking of Christmas, um, my sister-in-law and my niece and their, her husband, my sister-in-law's husband, um, came up from William, from Charleston, West Virginia, um, on Sunday. And we went to the Columbus Zoo to see the lights at the zoo on Sunday night. That was a lot of fun. And then, um, we met briefly again for coffee t yesterday before they headed back home. And one of the things my sister-in-law had in my, um, in my, um, bag of, goodies for Christmas was this little pin cushion so you can see it's got bees on it the bees are embroidered it's very cute it's felt it's rolled up felt you can see you can see the different colors so when you this came from a company in Alaska this lady sews them herself um, but it's machine embroidered and when you order it they tell you that you're getting the outside color, but the coordinating color on the inside may not be um, the same for everybody. So you can kind of push it up in the in the middle, um, just uh, strips of felt, but you just kind of you know kind of stick your needles in there. I don't have needles in here, 
um, where I'm at. But um, yeah, you just kind of stick your needles in there. And it's really cute. So this, you might see be seeing this um, going forward, this little needle roll. This is really perfect for me. And I've been, I've been playing with it and, you know, pushing it in and out and stuff because you can manipulate the center, the core of it. And it's just uh, strips of felt that are rolled pretty tightly. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, this is my new little uh, pin cushion. Thank you to my sister-in-law for getting me a nice, a nice little pin cushion. So I don't really have much else um, as far as diamond painting goes um, or cross stitch goes. Um, I don't have anything new to show you because I haven't really finished anything. And um, you've pretty much seen everything I've been working on. I don't have any progress because, you know, I've been working for the last two, two weeks or so. I've been working on the model stitch. Um, when that comes out, I can show you, I can put up the, um, the video that I took, you know, earlier this week or late last week um, where I was kind of stitching on it. I don't want to show you that video now because I think I did expose part of it. So I, you know, I really can't show you the video until the pattern's been released. So you may not see that video snippet for a little bit. Um, one of the things I did print off, though, I did print off a couple of tag questions. Um, sets for Christmas tags and ho Happy Holidays and Merry Christmas. Um, there's also New Year tag questions. I may save the New Year tag questions for a video next week. But, um, so, without further ado, let me go ahead and um, let's look at this. Um, okay. I'm going to do the Happy Holidays YouTube tag questions. And this comes from mamacatslosinit.com. M-A-M-A-K-A-T-S-L-O-S-I-N-I-T.com. Mamacatslosinit.com. Okay, so this is the Happy Holidays YouTube tag. All right, question number one is what makes holidays special for you? <laughs> I think what makes um, the holidays ultra special is just being able to spend time with family having some downtime because we can all use that little rest and just, you know, taking it all in, enjoying the beautiful weather. Um, it's like in the mid fifties here today and it's supposed to be a little warmer tomorrow. So we're not going to have the white Christmas, but you know, you don't really need snow on Christmas to have, um, a really good Christmas. But what makes them special for me is just, you know, spending time with family and just being together and just having the time to just, you know, relax and kind of enjoy yourself. So the question two is what's your favorite holiday song? Um, I have a couple of them. One of them is one that I've had since I was little. It's the little drummer boy. For some reason, I really loved that song growing up. And now my favorite all time Christmas song or holiday song is um, Carol of the Bells because I play hand bells in church and it's just I just love 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 that song um, under the same note my absolute least favorite song and I will even turn off the radio when this song comes on is the one about the Christmas shoes and the kids buying shoes for his mom so um, yeah so and sorry about the mess in here. I'm just kind of in my craft room and things are, you know, kind of helter skelter in here. Just uh, um, things are going to be changing because we're going to be uh, moving hopefully in a, another month or two. So, you know, um, it'll change. But I kind of wanted to be in here today with the natural light um, to just kind of do something different. And to so I can also show you my diamond painting for the reindeer. Um, so my favorite holiday makeup trend I don't have a favorite holiday makeup trend um, glitter hats Santa hats you know um, it's not really makeup but I have reindeer socks on I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get my foot up here so you can see it well let me see oops well you can see my toe <laughs> so let me turn this down a little bit so you can see yep I have my reindeer socks on. See that? I like I like goofy socks. So, sorry about the shaking. Um, the table is an old desk that's like twenty some years old and it wobbles a lot. So, um, anyway, I got my reindeer socks on for tonight. So that's that's kind of fun. I was wearing my Hanukkah socks on Sunday. 
Um, I don't really wear a lot of makeup, so I really don't have makeup trend. Um, I did just get black lipstick. My husband wanted me to try black lipstick, so... I did get some black lipstick, so I have that to try. Maybe I'll wear it on camera sometime for you. Um, so question number four is where do you usually spend your holiday? Um, well, up until this year, we were going down to my in-laws in West Virginia most of the time for Christmas. Um, because, you know, all my husband's family would gather at their house for the holiday and we'd all open gifts and eat and rest and sleep and fun, have fun and just enjoy it. Um, but you know, my in-laws passed away in 2018. And, um, so last year we spent the last Christmas at the in-laws house. The in-laws house is still on the market. It's still up for sale. Um, so if you know of anybody in the Williamstown, West Virginia area that's looking for a really nice house to buy, let us know. We have one for sale. Um, <laughs> Uh, but last Christmas was the last Christmas in the house for everybody. And this year, my husband and I had been planning on going to California for to spend Christmas with my mom and stepdad. Well, as you also know, my stepdad passed away in June. And uh, my mom is now here with us in Ohio. You might have seen her in the doorway a little bit um, in the earlier part of the video. But we um, in November, I moved my mom back to Ohio because I'm all she's got and um, you know it's just going to be easier for her to be here with us and we, we're going to take care of her um, in her later later years um, she's 72 so sometime, sometime I'll get her to come on camera to show you some of her knitting and some of her diamond paintings she's finished two diamond paintings um, by Diamond Dots so I'll be able to show those to you hopefully in the next video before the end of the year so um, anyway, where do we usually spend our holiday? Well, that's going to be changing for us. Um, so this year we're spending it at home. This is the first Christmas probably in over, well over 10 or 15 years. We've spent Christmas Eve and Christmas Day at home, at our house. Um, we have mom here, so we have a bunch of stuff. Um, we have a bunch of stuff wrapped. We didn't put up a tree this year, but we did pull out two ceramic Christmas trees to stick on our buffet where all our gifts are going to be placed. Um, we got, we just went out and mom bought, uh, Cinnabon cinnamon rolls for breakfast tomorrow morning. So we have Cinnabon cinnamon rolls. And also, um, my husband has been wanting to do a, um, popular Japanese Christmas Eve dinner out in Japan. One of the popular things to do is to get strawberry cake and fried chicken for, um, everybody gets KFC fried chicken in Japan because it's like, it's like the trendy thing to do. So we went out, we just got back and we, we bought a, um, strawberry cake from Golden Delight Bakery, which I can, you know, show you pictures of and share with you. Um, in the next couple of days, I'll probably be doing kind of a Christmas wrap up video. Um, so I can show you everything that Santa brought me and everything that I got for Christmas. Um, but, uh, we also got Popeye's fried chicken. Um, so we're going to have fried chicken and a couple of sides and strawberry cake for dinner tonight. Then I'll go to church, play handbells, we'll get home. We'll kind of relax for a little bit and then go to bed, wake up in the morning, have cinnamon rolls. Then my husband is going to do a, he's going to cook a rib roast for us for, for Christmas Day dinner. So that'll be fun. Um, we're just going to kind of hang out tomorrow at home and kind of be in our pajamas. But um, this year is our kind of first year at home making uh, new holiday traditions with mom. So... Um, number five is must have winter essentials. Obviously in Ohio, it gets kind of cold. Um, and we do get snow, so you need a coat, um, some sort of hat of some type to keep your ears warm and gloves or mittens. Um, boots are kind of optional, but they do help keep your feet warm. Um, you also need an ice scraper or a snow, a snow thing for your car and also snow shovel and ice, uh, ice melt which is like either salt pellets or some sort of other product you can uh, sprinkle on your sidewalks to help melt the ice um, because we do get ice too. Um, what would you be your dream place to visit for the holiday season? Well, my dream place to visit in general is going to be Austria. I've always wanted to go to Austria. Austria might be very pretty in the, in the wintertime. Um, maybe even Switzerland. I think Switzerland would be really pretty in the wintertime. Um... Yeah. 
So Austria and Switzerland would be my dream places to visit for the holiday season. Um, colorful Number seven is colorful lights or white lights. I think it depends on the application of your lights. Um, for us, my husband and I, our Christmas tree has white and blue lights on it. So technically they're colorful, but they're two colored. They're white and blue. Um, we have icicle lights on our house that stay up year round because we can change their colors um, to for different um, different times of the year. And right now they're on blue and white. Um, we also have snow, one of those snowflake projector lights that project the snowflakes on the side of your house. Um, we have those that they're, and they're blue and white. Um, we have two spiral tree, two small spiral trees out in our front yard that are white. And I believe the other spiral tree is like a purple or pink. I think it's a purple. Um, but uh, we're kind of, you know, one or two color light people. Um, colorful lights are really pretty in some aspects. Like um, one of the ceramic trees that we have on our little buffet is a little green one that has multicolored lights. The other one is a bigger white ceramic tree that has blue lights in it. So we're kind of... Um, you know, maybe one or two color people, um, but the colorful lights, you know, they do they do serve their purpose. But we tend to choose like white and some other color. My husband isn't a super huge fan of white and red lights together because he says they're just kind of eh. Um, so he likes white and green. He likes white and blue, white and purple. You know, that kind of two tone, two tone kind of colors. But white and red is not his favorite combination. Um, Number eight is, do you celebrate Christmas? Well, yes, we do. Um, my husband and I are, my husband's Catholic. I'm Christian or Methodist. And um, yeah, we celebrate Christmas. Um, I have had some friends who, um, whose parents, one parent was Catholic, one parent was Jewish. So, you know, they celebrated both Christmas and Hanukkah. So, you know, um, we celebrate Christmas. Um, we acknowledge the other holidays, but we don't, you know, we don't know enough about the historical meaning of the holidays to actually celebrate them ourselves, but we do celebrate Christmas. So, um, number nine, share a family holiday tradition. So every year, um, when I was growing up, when I was little, we spent most of my, um, Christmases with my grandparents in Wyoming. And, um, when I was growing up, usually what happened is, you know, they'd, um, I'd stay up to watch, to wait for Santa Claus. This is when I was real little and they'd fall asleep. So they'd put me, oh, excuse me. They put me to bed and then they would set up for Santa Claus and Santa Claus would bring me all my stuff. Some of this stuff would be, um, unwrapped and set up in the middle of the room, you know, so I'd come down and I'd see like a dolly and, you know, a table and chairs and stuff that was for me. And um, some of the Santa stuff would be wrapped under the tree, but there would all be, always be a bunch of stuff out. And so I'd come down and, you know, they'd get my reaction of, as I, like, you know, walk up to some of the unwrapped stuff and start to play with it. And then we'd get into opening gifts. And one of the last things that we used to do was open our Christmas stockings because our Christmas stockings would be hanging up um, on the fireplace, above the fireplace. And so the last thing we do is open our Christmas stockings. And I remember when I was little, um, my uncle Doug, my mom's youngest brother, um, who has since passed away. He, um, he died in 2008, but, um, he, he would, he's, he's only, he would have only been 11 years older than me. Um, so he would have been, um, 50, 59 this year. He would have been 59 this year. Um, but, uh, anyway, he would, he would come down and he'd get so mad because he'd look up where his normal stocking was hanging and there'd be this white sock with his name and glitter down the white sock. And the white sock would always be full of charcoal briquettes. <laughs> he was never happy to wander down and see the stocking. And so usually he'd kind of, you know, he'd kind of get upset and leave and <laughs> they'd have to go down and get him and bring him his normal stocking but yeah he you know if you did that to kids nowadays people would think that you're just really cruel but it's kind of a family tradition so it you know it was it was really fun so when I was in sixth grade we had a family reunion at Christmas time because um 
you know, my grandma had spent two years making all the, all the ornaments on the tree, including the tree topper. And it was just going to be a special Christmas for everybody. We had a photographer come in and do family photos and all kinds of stuff like that. And so, you know, it was always a big deal, um, to come down and see the, um, sock hanging there. So, um, the white sock was hanging there, but it wasn't full of coal. It was for my uncle, you know, it was just kind of like a family, little family tradition, but his, uh, it was kind of hanging up with his other stocking. But the funny thing is, is that year when I was going through my stocking, I kept finding little itty bitty gritty black stuff, you know, and in the stuff I was pulling out of my stocking and I got down to the toe of the stocking um, <laughs> and I pulled out this wrap thing. Normally the stuff in the stocking wasn't wrapped, but this one, this piece happened to be wrapped. And as I pulled it out, you know, little, little dirty pieces of stuff was kind of falling out of it and they un unwrapped it. And it was an a actual real piece of coal. It was kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> and my uncle got a big kick out of that. He laughed at me and we laughed at each other. But it was it was kind of funny because I actually got a, a real lump of coal <laughs> in my stocking when I was in the sixth grade. It was pretty funny. Um, but yeah, so that that's kind of our tradition. And Dylan's, <laughs> Dylan, my husband's family, um, you know, he's, my husband's the youngest of four. He's got um, two older brothers and an older sister. The older, the sister is the oldest of everybody. Um and my husband's the baby, but when they were growing up, you know, they, they had a two story house. So everybody was asleep upstairs and the parents to buy some extra time would put their stockings on the edge of their bed. So they would wake up in the morning and they'd have their Christmas stockings. So they'd have stuff to play with, you know, on Christmas morning. So the parents could sleep a little extra. So <laughs> then they had to wait. They had to wait for the mom and dad to be ready to go downstairs. And so the dad would make them line up in the hallway and they'd march down the stairs singing Christmas songs <laughs> to the Christmas tree. So that was kind of one of their traditions that they always did. So yeah, their, their traditions were a little different. Um, my family, we always had our big dinner on Christmas Eve. Um, you know, everybody would sit down to real big turkey dinner and stuff on Christmas Eve around two or three in the afternoon. And then we'd all just kind of relax. And then, you know, on Christmas Day, we'd get up, we'd have something for breakfast, we'd open gifts, and then everybody would just munch and graze and play and sleep and just kind of enjoy themselves on Christmas Day. My husband's family, on the other hand, they did their big dinner on Christmas Day. So I got used to, um, you know, just kind of having a relaxing Christmas Eve, going to bed, getting up, you know, kind of help preparing the, the dinner and waiting for the rest of the family to show up at the ha at their house because you know they have a pretty big with um Dylan's dad's side of the family and the four the four of Dylan's you know four of his kids and then the stepmom the four of her kids and all the grandkids and all the great grandkids there'd usually be about 30 people or so at the in-laws house on Christmas day so we'd wait for people to get there after, you know, they've had Christmases at various other places. Um, and then we'd open gifts and or eat first and then open gifts. It does, you know, just kind of depended on when food was going to be ready. But we would usually open, open food, open gifts and have food. And then everybody would just kind of, you know, dissipate and um, everything like that. So that is basically our holiday tradition. Uh, number 10, what is your most memorable holiday moment? Um, that has to probably be the, <laughs> the sixth grade, um, family reunion at Christmas that we had and getting the coal, just kind of being there with everybody. That was the last, um, uh, holiday family reunion type thing that we had for our family, um, for my, for my side of my family. Um, yeah, cause not long after that, um, my grandmother passed away in 1986, um, and the family kind of kind of broke up and dissolved a little bit. We haven't really been together as a big family on my side since since Christmas <laughs> in sixth grade. So um, that's kind of probably one of my most memorable holiday moments. Um, number eleven, your favorite holiday decorations? Well, um, I like those ceramic trees. Um, we have a ceramic tree. We have two of them up this year. I think there's a third one somewhere in our basement. Um, but I like the ceramic trees. Um, 
<laughs> my husband and I are avid Hello Kitty fans, so we have a lot of Hello Kitty decorations on our tree. I'd probably say at least over half of our decorations for our Christmas tree are Hello Kitty ornaments, or some some sort of form thereof. And I also have some stitched um, stitched ornaments on on our tree that. Uh, that I've made over the last probably 15, 20 years since I've been stitching. Um, and uh, I, w I had I had a lofty goal at one point that I wanted to do a Christmas tree with nothing but stitched ornaments. Now they, that still may happen because one of my goals for 2020 is to see if I can see if I can challenge myself to complete an ornament a month. And I don't know if I'm going to combine Christmas and Halloween or if I'm going to do just Christmas or just Halloween or one of each um, every month. But I'd like to at least start and finish, if I can, um, Christmas ornaments once a month this year in 2020. That's one of my goals. Um, but my favorite holiday decorations are probably lights in general. Um, I like looking at lights. We go to the um, zoo lights pretty much every year. We really like that. And it's a lot of fun. Um, but uh, for at home, you know, just the ornaments on the tree and the ceramic Christmas trees. All right. So number 12, have you ever been caught under a mistletoe? <laughs> um, not on accident. <laughs> um, we've hung mistletoe before, but I haven't ever been caught under a mistletoe by accident, you know, where I stood there and somebody came up and gave me a kiss because I was standing under it. No, um, <laughs> I've placed it on purpose. And then, you know, as I was talking with somebody, you know, I kind of, we kind of moved a little bit and I, you know, then I looked up and I was like, oh, mm, you know, <laughs> but no, I haven't actually been caught under a mistletoe. But um, I have kissed under mistletoe. Um, Thirteen, hands down, what's your all-time favorite holiday food and holiday sweet treat? Well, this year we're starting something new. We're doing fried chicken and strawberry cake. So that's going to be new for us. Um, but my all-time favorite holiday food is probably yams. I love me some candied yams. My husband hates yams. He hates sweet potatoes. He hates squash. He hates stuff like that. He doesn't really, it's something about the texture and the taste. He, it's just not his favorite thing. I love me some candy yams. So that's one of my most favorite holiday foods. Um, of course, it goes without saying that, you know, turkey and dressing and creamy casserole and cranberries and, you know, all the other stuff that you make with yams. But candy yams is probably hand down one of my favorite holiday foods. And my favorite holiday sweet treat is divinity. Um, my grandmother had this wonderful recipe to make divinity, but it is such a finicky confection to make. You can't make it when it's humid outside. You can't double the recipe because it sets too fast. There's just all kinds of things with divinity. Um, I actually do kind of prefer a little bit of walnut or pecan in my divinity, but usually when I make it, because my husband isn't a huge fan of like nuts and his fudge and stuff like that, um, I will make the divinity without without the nuts. But my favorite holiday sweet treat, and this is because my grandma used to make it every year, is um, divinity. Um, one of the other things I used to like, when I was growing up, one of the big things that we used to do around the holidays with um, family and friends is my grandmother would make um, a couple of batches of vinegar taffy, and we'd have a taffy pulling party as kind of like a holiday family and friends get together. And I loved that. And I would like to bring that back. But nobody I know is kind of willing to come do a taffy pull. Um, but that was so much fun. I remember I remember doing that a lot. Um, well, not a lot, but I remember doing that several times growing up. And I really kind of want to get back into doing that because, um, you know, <laughs> vinegar taffy is really good. And having a taffy pull is a lot of fun. Although that stuff could be really molten hot when you first take it out. And then I remember when I was little, I used to have to have my grandfather or somebody else help me finish pulling my taffy because I could never pull it. Um, you know, because once you start, once you start pulling it, it's real soft in the beginning when you, when it first comes out of the, um, the pot. And then the more you pull it, you know, you, you're pulling air into it. So it starts to go from like a, um, kind of like an amber, uh, apple cider color down to like, you know, the white taffy that you normally see because you're actually pulling it to put, pull air into 
the taffy to make it taffy. And um, I, it would get to a point where it was really hard for me to pull taffy, but we used to, we used to hand pull taffy and it was a lot of fun. So my favorite holiday sweet treat is divinity, but my next most favorite one that I haven't had in many, many years is vinegar taffy. All right. So that does it for the happy holidays, YouTube tag questions. There was only 13 questions on that. Um, let me read through a couple of these other ones really quick, just to see. Um, so there's also um, Christmas tag questions from YouTubeSociety.com, YouTubeSociety.com, and um, there's another tag, the Merry Christmas YouTube tag questions from MamaCatsLosingIt.com. Um, let's see. Yeah, I just ask you to know, share a funny Christmas memory. Recite one line from your favorite holiday movie. Do you have any Christmas traditions, real or fake Christmas tree? I'll answer that. Real or fake Christmas tree? So growing up, we always got real Christmas trees because we'd go out to a tree farm nearby and buy Christmas trees. Um, when I was growing up, my grandmother always had two Christmas trees. She had one upstairs in her big picture window that was a white flocked Christmas tree and she always decorated it with the same color ornaments. One year it would be blue ornaments, one year it would be red ornaments, one year it would be green, one year it would be silver, one year it would be gold and she'd always have the same kind of lights on the tree and then all the boxes, the empty boxes that she'd wrap would be wrapped in the same color wrapping paper under the tree. And then the tree downstairs in the den that the um, all the normal Christmas presents would be under would be next to the fireplace and it would be multicolored trees. So it would be, you know, have all different kinds of lights and it was usually just a real green Christmas tree. So growing up, we always had real green, real green trees. Um, my grandmother always had the white flocked Christmas tree upstairs in the living room, more for decoration and show. And, um, you know, so then when I got older, we stopped getting real Christmas trees and we went over to fake. So, um, you know, you can get like scent sickles and stuff to put in your tree, your fake Christmas trees and make them smell like real. But we've had, we've had, um, artificial Christmas trees, um, for the last, oh, I don't know, 15, 20 years. My husband and I have never got a real Christmas tree since we've been together because, um, they're a little messy and we admit that we don't always water them like we should. And we have cats. We have five cats. And, yeah, it's bad enough that they climb the fake tree and end up near the top of the tree. But, yeah, if, they, if we got a real tree, uh, I think the cats would be licking the water and climbing the tree and scratching the trunk and doing all kinds of stuff. So we just have never had a real tree since we've been together. Um, but yeah, anyway, so this is going on almost 40 minutes um, by the time I uh, just kind of post this. So I just kind of wanted to come and wish you all a happy Merry Christmas. Um, not much stitchy updates. I just hope everybody's enjoying themselves and having a good day. Um, I'm off the rest of the week, so hopefully I'll be able to get another video or two loaded and get some projects done. And maybe hopefully get this reindeer diamond painting a little farther along. And um, we can kind of go go along with you. Um, I will be hopefully showing you some of the stuff I got for Christmas in the next couple of days and uh, everything like that. So anyway, those of you out there that are watching my video, I hope everybody has happy holidays. I'm saying happy holidays because there's about 14 holidays that happen between Thanksgiving and the New Year. So yeah, happy holidays everybody. It's not meant... It's not meant to weed out Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy All, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy everything that you might celebrate. Um, take care and, in, you know, just keep on keeping on because that's all we can do. And until next time, take care and I hope Santa brings you everything that you want if you celebrate Christmas. Um, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.